What's up, folks? My name is Melvin Gomez, and welcome back to this amazing place that we call the Internet. Now, you know, now that it's 2018, and I actually can remember that it's 2018 and not 2017, uh, I can actually take the time to appreciate either the things that might be coming along uh, through gaming or things that might be going away through gaming. But the one thing I would like to come back is definitely 2008, especially after reading a uh, GameSpot article on how... 28, 2008 has turned 10, but I never really realized how many great things were at, like, there at the same time. Like, that kind of, like, I never realized, just, like, I mean, just think about it, all right? There's the new HD generation, the Wii came out, and even though the Wii is not as good of a console as some Nintendo fans might say, it still came out with a lot of great games, some very, very innovative games, and, um, you know, uh, and we can see that and we can appreciate I think people even younger than me might appreciate it if they played those same type of games. I'm looking through the list. I see Burnout Paradise, No More, no More Heroes, uh, Res HD, Devil May Cry 4, Super Smash Brothers, Valkyria Chronicles, Grand Theft Auto 4, you know, <laughs> really great game. Metal Gear Solid 4, which I haven't played. Uh, some people actually don't like it that much, I don't know. Uh, Battlefield Company, uh, Battlefield Bad Company, that's a pretty good version of Battlefield, Persona 4, Braid, Too Human, Dead Space, Far Cry 2, uh, Fallout 3, Call of Duty, World at War, Mirror's Edge, World of Warcraft, Wrath of the Lynch King, Mortal, Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, Left 4 Dead, and you see, so that, that's the list of games that GameSpot has, and now I get to, you know, respond. Yes, 2018 seems to be a very, very great year for gaming. You know, I can never say what's the best year of gaming because I was, you know, I don't remember. Like, my gaming taste re reflects based on the games that I bought. And I don't buy games. I never buy, uh, never the, what when a game came out affects me. I would just be as excited for a game that came out in the 1990s for a game that came out in 2018. I really don't care when the game came out. I just want to get it, and if I can afford it. So that means usually I get older games, because I can afford those older games. So, you know, time doesn't really matter to me. But it's nice to see a lot of great games uh, in 2008. It seems to be a great time. And what I think made it so great was that a lot of different elements of gaming came together. And at the same time, a lot of them are going away. You know, uh, some of a great example was, you know, the PSP was still kicking in 2008. It's no longer a, a joke that we made. It wasn't a joke that we made fun of at the time. PSP had a lot of great games. At the same time, the DS came out. And the DS had a lot of, a lot of great games. They still, I, I think, in terms of how many great games have been played on the DS, I think the DS is underappreciated. Because there are so many great games that have not been experienced yet by the majority of DS owners. Most DS owners bought New Super Mario Bros. And that's still a great game, so that's also a great console. PS2 was surprisingly still kicking as well. Um, you know, even though the PS3 was still out, people who had a PS2 could still enjoy a bunch of great games. PS3 was out, and it was around the time where they were getting rid of some of their kinks, so it wasn't as bad as getting it day one, you know, 599 US dollars and things like that. And then, you know, Xbox 360 came out, and the Xbox 360 had the summer games or things like that, or like indie games. Indie games started becoming popular. Like Braid is one of them. Braid is one of those popular games that changed the way gaming is forever. Even though, in and of itself, the game is not horribly complex. I don't mean that in terms that it's a bad game, that it's a simple game, that's a game for kids. I mean in terms of how it was produced and executed. It was someone with a really, really good idea. They sold it at a, at a cheap price, and people bought it in droves. People bought it in droves, and that's a great thing. You know, this was a thing where all gaming ideas just sort of just came out, but at the same time, all the gaming ideas were working. Even uh, World of Warcraft, that was still kicking. You know, now we don't get to see RPGs, and that actually makes me... I, I used to be a big MMO fan. Uh, you know, with RuneScape. <laughs> I don't think I should have said that. But yeah, RuneScape did start it off. And then there were some other ones. I think like Cabal, if any of you remember Cabal Online, which I don't. Well, no, I do, I do. I do remember it. But many of you probably don't. 
you know, it's Club Penguin. Club Penguin guys, you know me. That's, that's not right, PG. I was kidding. Uh, but yeah, there's so many. Uh, I know my one of my brother's favorite is Guild Wars 2, and I never bought it because I never was willing to put in the $60. But at least I have uh, I have that uh, God, Skyrim Online thing. I have that, so that, that still exists, and I should play that sometime. But yeah, there's a, there was a lot of great ideas in 2008 that, you know, seemed like, oh, every idea... Every gaming idea could work. But then some gaming, some AAA companies were like, you know what, maybe not all ideas could work. Maybe let's just make everything open world. Let's do everything like GTA. Yeah, let's do everything. Everything, everything should be like GTA. And then Assassin's Creed came out, and we are like, okay, you know, it's not, it's not the best game in the world. It's fine. Assassin's 2 came out. Assassin's Creed 2. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is, this is really successful, guys. Guys, this is really successful. Should we, like, start doing this, like, full time? And then, yeah, Ubisoft did it full-time. And then now all we get is open-world games. And it really pisses me off. Because uh, <laughs> games don't need to be open-world. Games don't need to be only multiplayer. Th th that thing doesn't matter. None of that matters to me. What matters is that we just get good games. And in 2008, everyone who had a great idea for a game pretty much did it. Uh, I I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean. A lot of great ideas came out. And we're better off now as gamers. So hopefully when the new generation comes, maybe we can start seeing what worked in the past and, you know, start benefiting from it because, you know, now we're kind of getting bored of some of these generation games that we've had. We're kind of getting bored of Assassin's Creed. We're kind of getting bored of Call of Duty. You know, new things start, need to start coming up now. We need new, you know, first part. Like even like even Mortal Kombat, you know, I, everyone likes the new Mortal Kombat game, the Mortal Kombat DC game, but oh, Injustice, that's the, yeah, everyone likes Injustice too, but it, that's getting old too, they need to come up with a new idea to keep freshening up the, the series, you know, I know Metal Gear Solid 5 came out recently, so we're not going to expect that anytime soon, so I, I don't know about that one, but, you know, Persona 5 came out recently, so that's good, it took like almost 10 years for Persona 5 to come out, that, that, that shows you the quality that they are going for, uh, so, yeah, this is essentially, I don't know how we can analyze this, I don't know how we can get better from this, but we can try, we can definitely try, folks, so let's be hopeful in the future. Uh, with that said, I've been Melvin, I hope you have an amazing time, whether on or off the internet.